Hello everyone, welcome to this very special episode of how to make your own weapon skins for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. My name is Hollandja and I am the creator of the Oxide Blades and Oceanic Skin Collection. This episode revolves mainly around the recently announced Dreams and Nightmares skin competition hosted by Valve themselves, where you can win 100,000 US dollars per accepted weapon skin and see your design used in the Dreams and Nightmares weapon collection. In this video, I will give a quick and concise overview of what you will need to get started and how at the end you can properly tag your item as an entry in the Dreams and Nightmares competition. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. This video is going to be split in eight different sections, which allows you to quickly browse through the video to get to where you want to be. This tutorial will be a little less explanatory in comparison to my other weapon skin tutorials as I'm trying to make it as quick and easy to digest for someone who just wants a quick overview of the process. Let's start out with downloading all the files and documentation that we will need to get started. The files can be downloaded from the official CSGO weapon finish guide. In the zip file, you will find the blank EV sheets, 3D model files, and also some text file examples of finishes. I have also hosted these privately on my own Dropbox, which I will link to just in case the Valve's website is down. After you have successfully downloaded these, my first recommendation would be to take a look at all the official documentation that Valve provides. These websites are really helpful for anyone starting out to get a better understanding of exactly what Valve is looking for in a finish. Next up is downloading all the necessary programs though to make your own skins. There are many different programs out there, both free and paid that you can use. However, the ones that I use are as follows. Photoshop, Adobe Substance 3D Painter, Adobe Substance 3D Designer, 3D Code, VTF Edit, GCF Scape, and lastly, 3D software like Blender or Autodesk Maya. You can also use any other 2D editing programs like GIMP and Illustrator, but I personally prefer using Photoshop as it just is a program that I'm really used to. Um, but you don't need to have all these different programs. Uh, Photoshop would work just fine together with VTF, VTF Edit. Um, I just use other programs like Substance Painter and Substance Designers for different purposes in the design process. Um, however, if you are using GIMP, please stick around for the quick FAQ section at the end of the video as I get the same question asked a lot of time from people who use GIMP. Lastly, if you need a little bit more help with unpacking in-game files or finding the original texture files for the weapons, I would like to refer you to my first episode in this tutorial series as I go in great depths on how to get all the extra little things set up. Now, on to the second part, which is also going to be the part where I can't help you that much, and that is creating concepts. Everything you submit to this workshop has to be your own original work. This means that you cannot download images from the internet, whether they are commercially free or not, and use that on your designs. Valve wants you to create your own work from scratch. First, you will need to come up with a concept for either one of the 17 weapons which will end up in the weapon skin collection. These finishes can be random patterns or custom made designs, but make sure they fit the rarity that Valve is looking for to increase your chances. Also, make sure to follow the proper image formats. I recommend working on a 2K texture sheet, which is 2048 pixels in width and 2048 pixels in height. After you came up with the design, sketch it in the software that you want to use, 3D model or not, and once you're happy with the concept, start developing on the final design. This can be a really long, tedious process, and there will be times where you simply don't really know what direction you want to take a design in. All I can say in that case is keep trying and see where your imagination takes you. While concepting, you can use 3D programs like Blender or Marmoset to periodically see how your design looks on the 3D model. If you are unexperienced, it can be quite daunting to work on a UV sheet, and even for professionals, it's quite annoying. 3D programs like Substance Painter and 3D Code can really help in these situations as you are usually working directly on the 3D model itself. Aside from these things, I can't help much more with this. Learn the programs you're using, get comfortable, and once you're happy with your final design, let's import it in the game and see what it looks like. Before opening the game, we will need to save our texture as a TGA file in your program of choice and then convert this to a VTF file. For this, you can either use the newly added in-game VTF converting option or use good old VTF edit. I have a link in the description where you can download the VTF edit software from my personal Dropbox folder. To convert using VTF edit, import your texture in the program, use DXT1 conversion for the normal format and DXT5 for the alpha format, and then save it as a VTF in your folder. Now we are ready to launch the game. So now that we are in game, we can import our finish in the workbench to see what it looks like there. To open the workbench, type workshop underscore workbench in the console and hit enter. 
In part two of my tutorial series, I go in depth on what all these parameters do so that you can alter these values to fit your purpose. So I highly recommend watching that tutorial if you need a little bit more info on that. In the workbench, you can change things like the specularity, the exponent of the specularity, minimum and maximum wear, offset ranges, but most importantly, your finish style. Valve offers nine different finish styles. However, solid color and anodized finishes have never been accepted by the development team before. Generally speaking, you can use anodized airbrushed, anodized multicolored, spray paint, hydrographic, and patina for patterns, and gunsmith and custom paint job for custom designs. However, don't feel limited by this. Experiment around and maybe you can make a cool custom design in the hydrographic finish. Play around in here and when you're satisfied, click the save as button in the bottom right corner. Here you can navigate to your folder and save the design as a text file, which you will need when we are publishing the design to the workshop later on. Now, the workbench on its own is quite limited in how you can see your weapon skin. How about we go and give it a test in an actual offline match? I will super quickly show you how you can test out your weapon skin in game. Note this will not get you VAC banned. As long as you stay in an offline match, you should be good to go. First, we want to buy an already existing weapon skin of the weapon that you made a design for from the community market in the desired condition. I personally recommend using Factory New for wear purposes. Second, open your CSGO folder by right-clicking the game in Steam, click on Properties, Local Files, and then Browse. This will open Windows Explorer, and in here we will navigate to the CSGO folder. In this folder, I already have the required game files, and if you don't, unpack the Materials, Scripts, and Resources folder from the pack one dir VPK using GCFscape. Watch my first tutorial for a more in-depth look on how to do that. Find your VTF file of the texture and copy it. In the CSGO folder, we go to Materials, then Models, Weapons, Customization, Paints, and then find a folder for your finish type. This could be Custom Paint Job, Anodized Multicolored, Anodized Airbrushed, or any other finish. In this example, I use a Custom Paint Job skin, so I go into my Custom folder. Paste your VTF file in here, and remember the file name of your texture. Third, we go back to the main CSGO folder, and in here, we can navigate to the Scripts folder and then Items. In this folder, make sure to backup items underscore game and open the original one in a text editor. I use Sublime for ease of browsing, but you can use any other text editor if you want. Now in your browser, go to csgostash.com and find the weapon skin you have bought on the community market. Then on that page, find the finished catalog number of your item as we will use this to, to find our item in the CSGO file. Back in the items underscore game text file, search for this number by typing quotation mark your number, and then quotation mark again. This usually takes you directly to your item, but if not, keep clicking next until you see something like this. Now that we have found the original weapon skin, we have to replace it with our own text file. Remember that file that we saved from the workbench? Open this one up in your text editor and copy all the information in there and paste it right below this line. Make sure that when copying this over, that you don't copy over any of the brackets as this will make the game crash on launch or not load properly. Now we simply write down the name of the texture file that we placed in the custom folder and hit save. If you happen to have a normal map for your finish, you can add that in here too. Now boot up the game and load directly into an offline match. If you stay in the main menu and expect it from your inventory, this won't work properly because the skin will just turn up black. Now that we are actually in an offline match, we can buy our skin and inspect it in the game. This is a great way for you to look around, see how the skin reacts to lighting and all that kind of stuff. In the game, at, in the offline match itself, you can actually also go into your inventory and load the item from there. And from now on, it will also work in the main menus. Take this moment as a great opportunity to also take some screenshots for the skin. And you can disable the HUD by using CL underscore draw HUD zero. This was a super quick explanation on how to replace in-game skins with your own. If you need a bit more explanation or just a bit of a slower pace on how to do this, watch part 4 of my tutorial series where I explain it in more detail and just generally a lot slower. Now, the last thing we need to do before finalizing our submission is deciding how the weapon skin wears in the actual game. This takes a lot of time to explain, so I recommend watching part 3 of my tutorial series where I clearly explain how to do it. In short, you can use the alpha channel of your texture file to decide which parts wear faster than others by playing around with the grayscale values. When you have done this and are happy with the end result, you can upload the skin to the workshop. 
To do this, open the game and type workshop underscore publish in your console. Here, you click the add button and give your submission a title and a description. Then we add a preview image in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, select our text file for uploading and add our original texture file from which we created this VTF file. Now to enter the competition, you check this little checkbox that says enter this item into the dreams and nightmares contest and also check this to agree to the agreement. Now press publish and type I understand in the dialog box and wait for the file to be successfully uploaded. Once your browser opens the page for you, you should be able to add images, tweak your description and finalize your submission by adding additional contributors and finalize the revenue split. A little note is that this can only be done once you've finalized filling in your payment and tax information in the following page. Once finalized, your work will be publicly visible on the workshop and people will start rating your designs. You can keep track of the ratio up and down votes by clicking on the item stats on the top right. Now, all that's left to do is wait or make another design for another weapon before the deadline of the 21st of October 2022. There are no limitations to how many workshop entries you can upload to the workshop. Valve will notify the winners by the 21st of November, and if you're the lucky one, you will receive 100,000 US dollars on your bank account. Now, that's all you need to know about participating in this competition. In the description, I will add some useful links to, for example, my tutorials, the amazing overpay guide by Centauri, official Valve documentation, the CSGO workshop subreddit, and more. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section or make a thread on the CSGO workshop Reddit. I'm quite busy myself with the competition, but I will try my best to answer all your questions. To be a bit ahead of some of the more common questions, I will do a super quick FAQ right now. In GIMP, I only see a little bit of my file. How do I fix this? GIMP uses the alpha channel as a transparency input. Simply disable this layer by clicking the eye icon or make it completely white to see the original texture sheet. There is annoying black text on the weapon. How do I take it away? This is caused by the AO channel. I recommend watching my seventh tutorial video on how to take this away. Parts of my designs are not visible in the workbench, but I can see them in Photoshop. How do I fix this? This is because of the alpha channel. Make the alpha channel completely black to preview your full design and make sure to watch part three of my tutorial series on the alpha channel to actually figure out how to adjust the wear accordingly. My weapon skin shows up black in game. What happened? This is difficult to say as there are many things that can go wrong. Make sure to follow my instructions in part four of the tutorial series step by step. This method works at the time of recording on the 23rd of July, 2021. You might have used the wrong name or maybe you put it in the wrong folder. These are generally the problems that occur. Can I get a VAC ban for this? No. I don't have a bank account yet. Can I participate in the competition? No, you need to have a bank account and provide valid tax information to participate in this competition. Do you want to collaborate with me? I'm sorry, but no, I work alone on 99% of my skins. Uh, check out the dedicated workshop forum to find someone who might want to team up with you. And with that, that concludes the end of the video. I hope it was useful for everyone. And if you want to check out my workshop, you can do so by following the link in the description. With that said, I bid you farewell and I wish you all good luck in the skin competition. Happy skin making and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.